Spirit of God. What no eye has seen, no ear has heard, thousands of people holding hands and praying. The Lord wants us to take, bring the fire back to where we are from. I expect to see the face of my Heavenly Father. I am blessed to be uh, in this generation because I know that God will work through us. And welcome back to another wonderful meeting that we're having during our midweek service. And we know that God is going to do something very special. This is truly one of these momentous evenings that God, by His Spirit, only God could design what is happening here. And Charlotte's here with me, and we do have a guest that we're going to be introducing in a moment. But Charlotte, just greet our folk, please. Yes, we're so glad you're with us tonight, and you will be so inspired. There is so much prayer going up around the world. I don't know in America, and especially in this New England area, if we're fully conscious of how much prayer is truly going up from our brothers and sisters in Christ, and you are going to be tremendously inspired by our guests tonight and by what is going to be shared coming up on May 17th through the 19th. And of course, this is May 17th, and we're beginning here with you to excite you about something that God is doing literally across the globe, around the world. And one of the key people in making this happen is our guest, Tom Victor. Tom, thank you for joining us. And he is in Houston right now and coming to us via Zoom. But Tom, welcome and just share a little bit with our folk. Hey, well, so glad to be with you. This is an exciting time. Uh, we are watching God do extraordinary things, mobilizing his global body in intimacy with him, to be on mission with him uh, across movements, prayer, missions, and generations. And uh, boy, he's inviting us to join him in what he's doing, and it's compelling especially when you see it through the lens of what he's doing outside of the U.S. It will, it's, it's inspiring us to step up our game. Well, Tom, I'm just going to just ask you to be able to tell the folk a little bit about what happened historically 10 years ago and the fact that on this 17th, 18th, and the 19th of May, which is right here, we're in it. And God is moving literally across the earth, but he's centering it in Jakarta. And maybe you could just share a little bit with us about that and then introduce the video that we have, you've brought, you've produced, uh, you've worked along with those who have produced it, and, and give us a little bit of a, of a background about that. Thank you, brother. Yeah, well, again, 10 years ago, uh, Indonesia hosted the first World Prayer Assembly. Uh, we expected to have 3,000 leaders uh, gather uh, to listen to one another, to share the stories of what God was doing in the global prayer movement as it connected to missions and generations and marketplace leaders. Uh, we felt Indonesia was the best nation to do that because they are so, they have such a gift of prayer and unity. I don't know another nation like them. And uh, we invited Korea because they likewise have such a gift of prayer. Most many of you may know that. And out of their gift of their culture of prayer, God has birthed the most amazing global missions force for any nation their size. Uh, so they became the co-host nation. About uh, 400 people came from Korea to be part of the World Prayer Assembly. We expected 3,000 leaders. We ended up having 9,000 from 86 nations. Uh, it was tri-generational, by intention, children track, a youth track, and an adult track. But there were about 40 different focus areas from marketplace to uh, well, children, the 414 window was one of the tracks focused on kids. And 
kind of one of the highlights of it, besides being in this environment where we were experiencing together what God had done in Indonesia, the stories from other nations, uh, the gift that he had deposited there. Uh, they wanted to have a four-hour prayer event in their national stadium the last night. Well, that seemed a little extraordinary to us, <laughs> but not to them. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that. Their national stadium in Jakarta that seats well over 100,000. And they wanted to intentionally keep 20,000 of the seats available for children and 20,000 for youth. Uh, I'll just have to share this one other little story with you. As we were working on that and the planning of it over almost a three year period, uh, pastors and cities were gathering weekly to pray that God would help them to give away their gift of prayer and unity. Uh, quite extraordinary as we go back every three months. Um, I found myself praying as I went through immigrations. Father, I hope they were able to maintain their level that they were at last time because it was so amazing. But they never did. They had always gone further. Wow. But I, never, I could never anticipate it because I'd never seen it. Going in meetings that were children were leading in worship and prayer, and it was intergenerational. It was so beautiful. No junior Holy Spirit. I mean, it was just <laughs> incredible to watch. So on that last night, they wanted in the cities a few months into the planning to have their own gatherings when the stadium event happened. And my first response was, please don't do that. We want to make sure we fill the national stadium. We don't want empty seats. This could get telecast. <laughs> and they were saying, they responded back and said, but Tom, you don't understand. We're meeting together every week in our city. And God is doing something extraordinary. And we need to bring our city together too. So we said, well, okay, if God's doing it, you go for it. So there were going to be five other cities having a simultaneous citywide gathering while we met in the stadium. And then it grew to 10. And it grew to 20. And it grew to 50. And 100. And when we ended up on that last night, the 17th of May, 2012, having this four hour stadium event, there were 20,000 children, 20,000 youth, over 100,000 people present, but it was happening simultaneously in 378 other cities all across Indonesia. Wow. Most connected to the national stadium through digital. Uh, stream mm -hmm. uh, where that could happen. There were some regions because of mountains at that time that they couldn't, but we gathered somewhere between three and 4 million people we estimate for a four hour prayer meeting. I don't know of anything quite like that in our, in, in our country. But... No, the closest thing that, that our country has had to it are some of the, the things that took place, well, the, the men's movement in 1997 had yeah. a tremendous gathering that I was at. And of course, men, you know, <laughs> there was 1.3 million uh, men, uh, almost all men, because it was a men's movement. I, re I, re I remember seeing you there. Yeah, I was there. I was over to the right. I think you were <laughs> <laughs> well, if you happen to be up at Dick Simmons's, you might have actually caught me, but, uh, you know, we, uh, it was just really an exciting, an exciting thing. And, and, and then we did see the call take place and, and some of the other things that, that happened on the National Mall that really inspired our nation. But I think what we should do is I think we should just play this video that shows what happened. And then afterwards, we're going to come back and we're going to really unfold and talk about a number of these things. And I do want to just share with our people about, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to try to find out from Tom what it was that really put in him uh, 
this sense of urgency, not, not just in his own prayer journey, because we do want to understand that, and we want to explore our own individual prayer journeys, but there are many people that have, all of us have our prayer journey, and we never want to minimize that. But what happens when our singular prayer journeys moves into a corporate expression that literally begins to shake the very foundations of nations. This is what we want to try to understand. And then how, as a culture here in America, we can cooperate with what the Spirit is doing literally across the whole earth. And so, after we come back, that's where we're going to go. And so we're going to just roll that video at this point. And, and Tom, do you have anything that you want people to look for in their viewing of what takes place in the next few minutes on this video? Yeah, well, just you're just going to see how the nations came. You're going to see some different elements of it, who was there. Uh, you'll see at the end, on the last day, the stadium and some of what happened there. But you'll... You'll hear from people like Yongi Cho was with us in the stadium. Uh, Ina Karaboye from, from, uh, from Africa was there from Nigeria. Massive movement. Um, it was pretty amazing. So everyone from these top largest churches in the world groups to people that are just individually passionate about prayer and you'll see our indonesian friends you'll see the kids too oh my goodness and the so pay attention to the kids because they could be your kids <laughs> and i'm just going to say this because there might be some people that know it but a, a man brian mills who had a great influence in our lives from england uh, through our dear friend jeff marks who was part of the New England Concerts of Prayer, I saw him on the video and I saw Brian washing the feet of a child. And so you watch this and we will be back in a few moments. I'm from Korea. I come from uh, China. From Taiwan. To uh, what is Mexico. The United States. Birmingham, England. I'm from India. Singapore. I come from Finland. I'm from Indonesia. From Nigeria. Egypt. Uh, Toronto, Canada. And I'm from Jerusalem. Kita bertahta di sorga. But he is the God in Indonesia. Tapi dia juga Allah atas Indonesia. And he's our God for all the nations. I can feel the presence. I can feel the anointing. All inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him, for he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Oh Lord. I put my trust in you. Well, we are here gathered at the World Prayer Assembly, you know, expecting God to move mightily. I feel like this is a, a world-changing hour. I can feel God's love and I can feel God's presence in here. People are coming together from all kinds of churches, all kinds of nations. Various nations of the world coming together as a symbol of unity. So, so God is on the move. A new wave is coming. It's a yeah. new move of the Spirit of God. What no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Thousands of people holding hands and praying. The Lord wants us to take, bring the fire back to where we are from. I expect to see the face of my Heavenly Father. I am blessed to be uh, in this generation because I know that God will work through us. Given the number of nations represented here and the unity of the Spirit, this was historic. It will impact the world. Father God, we just come before you, Lord, and we declare and decree, Lord, that your spirit is to be poured out on all flesh, Lord. 
we thank you for what you're going to do in the coming days, God. The new wave is going to sweep across our land, God. We thank you and we praise you, Lord Jesus. We are here at Santo City, God City, the city that was dedicated to God as a place and center for transformation. This is going to be a tsunami of the Holy Spirit. It's going to sweep debris away in the nations. It's going to be, it's going to actually bring down strongholds of spiritual darkness. It's going to bring revival to the church. God is doing something. God is really moving in our nation. So this is just the beginning for the coming new wave. A new wave is um, the next level of um, anointing of the Holy Spirit. I believe the new wave is a new uh, movement that brings every part of the body of Christ, the Catholic, the mainline, evangelical, charismatic, Pentecostal, to come together in unity. I believe it is a new wave of transformation that God is going to do, and He is going to use ordinary people, as I have heard, to do extraordinary things for God. Like any move of God, the World Prayer Assembly did not take place in isolation. As we cried out for the wave of God's glory to fill the earth, our prayers joined millions of prayers that had gone before ours. In 1984, in Seoul, Korea, 3,000 church leaders came together to ask God to empower them to play their part in world evangelization. Today, South Korea sends out more missionaries than any country other than the United States. And currently, there are more than 22,000 Korean missionaries around the world. That assembly was explosive for global prayer movements as prayer initiatives began to spring up across the world. Annual city days of prayer found their place on calendars. People started prayer walking and prayer driving through their communities. Large prayer chains, networks and assemblies were organized. In 2001, the Global Day of Prayer was birthed and by 2009, it was reported that 220 nations came together and prayed. And now, the world is ready for the next level. When we pray, we need to remember the greatness of God and the frailty of man. And that gets us to the place of recognition that it's really Him and not us. And so we came here, uh, the leaders of mission movements, to see the wave, the new wave of the Holy Spirit sweep through the world. So this is a time to come together and say, God, where are you taking us globally as a church? We can't get there without you. So we're coming before you. You come. You empower us. You do in us what we need to have done so that we can be the kinds of influencers in the world so that you are exalted, you are glorified, your kingdom comes in homes, in communities, in churches, in cities, and in nations. Fill this place with your spirit. Accomplish your will among us. We all tribes and people and all tongues and nations together. Often Christian leaders are a big stumbling block because we're afraid of each other, uh, we're competitive, and we need to, to humble ourselves before the Lord. Just let God set the agenda. He wants to be the father. And he wants to see all the children can sit down together in one harmony. Kemudian aku akan datang kembali. And then I will come back. Dan akan merestorasi Pondok Daud. And restore the fallen tent of David. Leaders of some of the world's largest churches shared the stage at the World Prayer Assembly. God is waiting for you to come and fellowship with Him. Prayer without repentance. Doa tanpa pertobatan. You cannot expect any miracle from the Lord. Thank you for a gathering like this. Terima kasih untuk negara yang seperti ini. Thank you because we know you as our prayers here. WPA is such an important event because it brings people across the spectrum of, of work and across the spectrum of faith and across the spectrum of geography and provides a common ground, a place to humbly come before God together. You will sense in this event that marketplace 
people and church leaders can work together for the glory of God. A new wave is coming. Satu gelombang baru sudah muncul. And it will begin in the home. Mereka akan ketemu di rumah-rumah. In the streets. Di jalan-jalan. In the school. Di sekolah-sekolah. In the workplace. Di tempat-tempat kerja. That is Indonesia gift to the world Itulah today. Karunia Indonesia. God has chosen this prayer assembly, and Indonesia in particular, to move the prayer from the mountaintop to the marketplace. So we pray that the whole communities and cities and nations be filled by His glory and His power. And that can happen only when His children, His people pray. Ask of me, mintalah kepadaku, and I'll give you the nations for your inheritance. Maka bangsa -bangsa akan I believe that God is interested in every detail of every sphere of society. And that is why at the World Prayer Assembly, we had different tracks business and marketplace, church leadership, education, government, children at risk, cross-cultural missions, children in prayer, and youth. The children are part of God's mandate and mission and call from the beginning. And so if you don't involve the children, you're not going to fulfill the basic purpose of the World Prayer Zone. God begins to give us the the vision of Malachi, where the fathers and the children begin to turn their hearts one to another. They began to see each other in a new light. They began to see each other as being partners in God's purposes on earth. We're going to be reconciling the two generations, the older generation and the younger generation, so that we can fully live in the fullness of what God has for us. This is the time to pray for the young people, the, our um, next generation. We really have to uh, place importance on the children from the bottom of our heart. Because through the blood of Jesus, we're all equal. We're, they're not better than us, we're not better than them. So if we understand that we are equals because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can fully receive what they've, what they've done. Children can pray. They can shake the nation by their prayer. I have seen a number of miracles. They are praying, they are preaching, they are worshiping, they are healing, prophesying, planting churches. And I know now it's a part of the end time message they are coming in. The 17th, May 2012, was the day that all the World Prayer Assembly delegates traveled to the stadium in Jakarta. At the stadium, we join 120,000 people, all gathering to pray in a united voice. Our cities will be transformed. Our nation will be transformed. Father, in the name of Jesus. Walking on the corridor of that stadium, coming from the stage around uh, with some of the Indonesian leaders, their hearts were just so full of joy. They are just going, look at what God is doing. This place is packed and overflowing. And in 375 or 85 other cities, all over this nation, the same thing was happening. It was awesome. Let the new way. Some of the children that were in the stadium had prepared themselves, many of them, for over a year. They had made their own costumes, they had been praying and preparing their hearts, and here they were to come together to say, God, here we are, here we are. The lighting of the torch was symbolic of the unity of the church here in Indonesia. 
And that is the fulfillment of John 17. Jesus' last prayer, Father, make them to be completely one, even as we are one, so that the world will believe and will know that you have loved them as you have loved me. God was uniting his people in a unity and a purpose for the ends of the earth that will impact the nation. I believe that there will be a new wave of the Holy Spirit that will sweep through all the continents. We have had pockets of revival in the past, but we're going to see a global revival, and that is what the new wave is all about. We never have that uh, opportunity in China such we can hold the ce celebration the worship for God in the studio. So here we have a chance and I really appreciate God give me this chance. With much of today's church still facing persecution, millions of people united their prayer for transformation and once again the World Prayer Assembly lifted up the nations facing social and political turmoil. We still have a long way to uh, cry in the ears of the Lord to continue uh, the work that he's done. The North Korean people are under severe persecution. They are starving very much. When you're in a city like my city, uh, capital murder of the world, and you have so many challenges, and when you think about what you can do, you feel this, <laughs> this size, and uh, the only option you have is prayer. There's a season when you will restore what the enemy has stolen. There is a season that the people living in darkness will see your light. I'm gonna pray for Korea. In the name of Jesus, I just break the spirit of murder and bloodshed and slaughter right now in the name of Jesus. We bind it in the name of Jesus. We break it in the name of Jesus. Father, all idol worshiping, what we break it right now in the name of Jesus. We break that bondage right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we break the spirit of poverty and starvation in that land. Nowadays, especially in Indonesia, it's very difficult to build this building because they need a permit from the local government and from the community. But to pray and to become a good neighbor to their neighborhood, they don't need any kind of permit, so everybody can do it. The greater movement, the greater wave after WPA, what we call is the My Home Indonesia. My Home Indonesia that uh, we encourage everyone to adopt their street, uh, their home, to pray for their home, their street, and their neighbor. We're just going to pray, we're going to listen to God, go forward together, uh, keep in relationship with one another, and see how this works. Jesus said, occupy till I come. And one of the ways we occupy is by covering the earth with prayer. So he urges us to move into prayer for him to answer. God will transform the people, the land, the nations of the world. And we sense as we pray and seek God's heart and knock on the door of heaven that God is answering prayer. He has spoken things to individual lives. And now we, we're going to go back, we're going to take that back, but it's a daily in God's presence reality. And I think people have stepped into a new place in their relationship with God. It's going to become contagious. Uh, it's going to look different in different places and in different cultures. Uh, but it's, it's, it's the release of that new wave that we've been seeing and believing. It's a fulfillment of Habakkuk 2.14, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord covering the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. Well, I hope that you really appreciated and enjoyed watching this video and of course seeing Tom when he was 10 years younger, I suppose, <laughs> as uh, we saw him being able to bring comment and, and that in this particular video. But I'm, I'm just so grateful for what God has done 
historically to set these things in motion. I remember when Jeff Marks, who was our friend here in New England, New England Concerts of Prayer, I had come back from that event and he was sharing the enthusiasm and the excitement and, and we just know that God is doing mighty things around the earth. What I'm really wanting to focus in this next little bit is how, how did this happen for you, Tom? How did God really get a hold of you and, and take you from just having your own individual private prayer journey, which we all have and we all want, but to be able to see this mobilization begin to take place literally across the globe. So just, just, just share with us how God has moved in your designing and your fashioning to make you into the man that you have become in him. Yeah, well, it's only the grace of God for sure, because I was not raised as a follower of Christ. I was about to go into my second year of college at Western Washington University in Bellingham. After a year off to search for answers, when I was invited to a home meeting and God met me. Jesus People Movement, some of you, <laughs> some of you can search for that and maybe you'll find something in Wikipedia because it's a while back. <laughs> yes, it is. But just such an encounter with the living God. It was a former missionary to Africa that God had sent to our city two years earlier, not knowing why he had come. And then God began to send students to him in the Jesus People Movement, Pacific Northwest, right near the Canadian border. And I was one of those. He invited 30 of us guys to come and spend three months with him to be mentored. Then three of us started a coffee house out of that and saw students come to Christ. It was amazing. One year into that journey, um, I, God called me to go and prepare a little bit more. I meant going to school in upstate New York. Uh, God was so gracious to me that he had prepared this young lady, uh, Marcia Fulkersmith from Southern California to be there. Can I ask you, Tom, what, what, uh, what school did you go to in upstate New York? It was called Elam Bible Institute. I thought so. Uh, we thought so. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. went through so my we mind. We were like the first batch from the West Coast during the Jesus People Movement that first wow. year. Wow. So we sort of brought our little culture <laughs> to more <laughs> state New York. Can, can I ask what year it was that you went to Elam? Yeah, 1971. 1971, my goodness. <laughs> Well, so, we'll have Marsh to talk about Elam a, a, a little bit later, but not, not here and now, but uh, yeah, there's some wonderful, wonderful treasures that have come through that ministry. Yeah. David Edwards, I don't know if you recall David Edwards, but David was the pastor of Islington Evangel Center in Toronto, which was the church I came into the baptism of the Holy Spirit in. And uh, I, I've got to stop yeah. or I will tell <laughs> go, go off into that. Yeah. But, but yeah. please, yeah, no. just, just uh, one of continue our with your story. Uh, no, he was one of our professors. And uh, yeah, I remember him teaching on end time things. It changed the way we saw that. Precious guy. Paul Johansson was the dean of students. Yeah. yeah. He become, he's, he's a founding member of the board of the group that we started in 1999. He's been the most intentional friend I've ever known because he wow. never let it get away from him. Wow. So he's been on the journey of what we're involved in now since 1999 on our board, still a precious friend. So yeah, so the story with that was that Marsha at Elam was pretty convinced that I was the person for her and she let me know that one day. <laughs> Ask her, what's your, what's your dream? And she says, I want to be your wife. <laughs> <laughs> that was after she had asked me, what's your dream? And I said, I want to take the gospel to the nations. 
And yeah. I think it was out of that that she decided she wanted to be on that journey. Amen. And I immediately said, you know, we were sitting in a library in, in uh, Brooklyn, New York. We were doing, uh, Elam would send us to the city for three months for mm -hmm. urban ministry training. Yeah. And I said, you know, I think it's time to go back now because <laughs> I was <laughs> so not ready for her response. Wow. And shortly after that, as I was praying for this poor, infatuated young lady to not hurt her, and God spoke to me and said, you've never asked me my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. Uh -huh. and she, yeah, so I opened my heart, and the rest is history. We ended up getting engaged and got married the day we graduated, or after we graduated the next day at Elam, and started our journey together. So... Uh, yeah, it took, took us to to Chicago, and we were invited to help uh, replant a church plant there, and served in that capacity for two and a half years. And then, kind of connecting with your story too, uh, CBN was going national with their uh, 700 Club broadcast, and I was asked to take leadership, be the area director for CBN in Chicago. So. That started a 15 year, almost 15 year journey with them, serving in Chicago, Detroit, San Francisco for six years, Washington, DC for one year, and then at headquarters for the last five years with CBN. And during that time, Tom, I read that you were connecting with different ministry leaders from all over the world. So can you kind of um, expand a little bit how God brought you, as Brant was saying, from this kind of personal prayer journey into this whole um, forum, really, with other worldwide volunteers, leaders who were part of prayer and how God has taken and, and really caused this to explode? Yeah, well, being with CBN, because in the ministry centers, we networked with churches all over. So we had about 15,000 churches that we did follow up with. And of course, it helped us to see the different flavors because <laughs> we were reaching the city. You're broadcasting like you are. Uh, but it was really during my time at headquarters when I was responsible for the ministry division and our 90 some ministry centers around the world, uh, too much responsibility, going into an all-staff prayer meeting on Friday, crying out to God for some needs that were just overwhelming, and God just caught me. I'm in the middle of, a, of, a, of our Friday prayer meeting with about a thousand people, and it was like I was the only person in the room, and God just spoke to me and said, you're not believing me for enough. Wow. And it was almost that clear. It was audible on the inside. And I almost wanted to argue and say, God, I am so stretched right now. But I knew intuitively that that was not the right response. He was saying, you're so concerned about your little ministry. And you don't really know what's in my heart. And I knew God was saying to me, I want you to tithe your day in prayer. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't think I had the time to do it. <laughs> I had too much responsibility, but I knew it was a gracious call from a loving God to know his heart. You know, Tom, I'm going to ask that we just stop and pray into that right now. Sure. Because I believe, and I do want to pick it up. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to say let's just stop and pray the rest of the time, but I feel like the Lord is just speaking to somebody right now who's watching this, that that is a word from heaven for their heart to be mm -hmm. able to receive and apply. I'd like mm -hmm. you to just frame that one more time and then how you responded to it, and then go into prayer. And then I'm going to ask Charlotte to pick it up after you pray, and then I'll pray a little bit, and then we'll come back into the conversation. But I know that God is wanting to, first of all, this whole thing 
about the visions that we have. We, we, we think somehow we've got to carry everything and we've got to execute everything. And when it gets beyond what we can accomplish in the limits that we have, then we can't receive the bigger call. And God wants to get our connecting into a whole new realm where we see ourselves as being a part of what God is doing in the earth. And yes, there is a certain measure of responsibility that we carry in that. But ultimately, it's God's call to all of us as his body. So maybe you just just share a challenge about this and then and just lead us into praying yeah. for this. Well, just, yeah, I just, my response was, I don't know how to do that, but the next morning at 5 a.m., I was up to spend two and a half hours with God, and he began to lead me how to do that, and it really began with worship. Prayer really is coming into God's presence, apprehending his heart, spending time with him. He gave me a unique format to begin to pray that kind of got me on a prayer track. And that just began a journey 35 years ago. Uh, So Father, I want to thank you. I just want to celebrate today your gracious, gracious call to your children. You want intimacy. You want Uh, You want us to know you in the beauty of who you are. You want us to be consumed uh, by your love and your grace, to fully receive all that you are. And Father, thank you for this journey that has taught me that anyone can freely come. If I could, it's available for anyone in spite of all the uh, the challenges or the inconsistencies in us you remain gracious loving kind full of joy inviting us to experience daily the joy the smile you have over us when you think about us and the joy you have uh, because of the journey you have for us (laughs) to share your love with those around us, to be consumed by it and to be the carrier of your heart and your love to others. So Father, I just pray for those who are hearing right now, listening right now, that you would invite them, that they would hear your voice and they would be compelled, drawn to enter into a new place intimacy with you a new place of joy and wonder with with the trinity this amazing family of affection full of joy full of love to come and be part of your forever family god birth that today we pray in many hearts in jesus name lord we thank you for these words from tom lord They are the most important words we could hear. That Father, you long and you desire and you've always longed for a relationship with us as your children. And Lord, so many times we miss the mark because we think we're too busy or our own stuff is more pressing. Father, there is nothing more important than being in your presence, loving you, worshiping. Lord, you can do things that we can never, ever, ever do because of just the relational dynamic. Lord, when we let go and we release and we come with open hands, open hearts, Father, into your presence and we entirely surrender And Lord, it's not difficult to be in the presence of someone who we know loves us. That's a very beautiful thing. And Father, no one loves us more than you do. And so we just praise you today, God. And we ask, Lord, particularly for the church here in America that is so 
busy got with programs and agendas and and style over substance many times, Lord. And we're not trying to be critical, God, but we see it. And you see it, Lord. And all the time you're just saying, come, come. I'm knocking at the door of your heart. Open to me and let me come in and receive what I want to give you and how I want to multiply to you. And you will never know what God wants to do through you until you spend time in his presence. So Lord, we just open ourselves to this today afresh. In Jesus' name, amen. And Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would superintend our souls as we continue to move on this journey from individual prayer initiatives praying our agendas, praying our needs, praying the things that seem somehow so impactful to us on an individual level, to the Lord being able to abandon those things and come like Mary. Father, we are all so strapped with the responsibilities and fields, how important it is to fulfill all of the Martha duties but Lord, you said that Mary has chosen the better. That by her coming and sitting at your feet, she was able to do something that turned your heart, moved your soul, that caused you the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to be attracted. And Father, that is what we are desiring to do. And we're wanting to be, Lord. You know all of our stuff, God. You know the things that we believe for, try for, attempt for, try to be industrious about, God. But ultimately, Lord, it's what is on your heart. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you would show us how to gain access to heaven. Lord, we pray that even as that Habakkuk scripture has become the theme for this gathering, that the glory of the Lord will cover the earth like the waters cover the sea, that, Lord, your glory would extend throughout every area of, of judgment and, and every area of critical spirit and every area that is, is bringing limits on you so that you could just manifest your glory. It's your glory that we're longing for. It's your glory that we're thirsting for. It's your glory that is going to make the difference, Lord. Nothing we do in our human strivings even all of our right good attempts is going to be able to do what one moment in your presence for the company of planet Earth, persons, individuals. Lord, when you open these windows of heaven, when you manifest your presence and power, no one can resist you. Nothing on Earth can resist you. Yeah. So, Father, we praise you that we are about to enter into these days in particular that Tom is, and others are stewarding and bring leadership, bringing leadership to. And Father, we pray that you will bring forth this assurance of your essence into the hearts of men and women, literally around the world. Oh, in Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen. And amen. amen. Wow. Amen. Tom, I just I just sense God's presence and favor, even as we're just sharing these moments. Can can you yeah. just explain and we'll put it kind of like on a on a, a, a the lower third so that people can go and they can see it. Explain how that they can connect with what's happening over in Indonesia. And I know we're, we've recorded this a couple days early, so we know you're going to be there on site in Jakarta and, and be with the people who are actually executing these, these plans that are being made, but just so that people can know how to connect with what you're doing there. Just sure. let us know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Well, again, this will be my 35th trip to Indonesia. <laughs> I just wish I could take every one of you with me because they get it. They are, again, it's the world's largest Muslim nation. The church in the midst of that pressure has become so passionate in their pursuit of God and so united. Uh, Korea is the co-host nation with us. They're known for prayer and missions. They have been captured by God's heart for lost people because of that. Uh, so our gathering will have about 50 international leaders and about 25 national level leaders. When we had it before, we had 9,000 leaders gather in person from 86 nations. It was awesome. The big stadium event. This time it will primarily be digital. Good news. You can all join us. <laughs> right. It's actually better in a certain way. You don't even have to buy a ticket. You don't have to have vaccination uh, proof. You don't have to take a PCR test like I had to yesterday. It came out negative. I get to go. You don't have to do all of this stuff. <laughs> Wear a mask, uh, get jet lag for <laughs> 24 hour flight and 12 hours difference from my time. Uh, but you can join us. So it will be happening in Jakarta on the 17th, 18th, and 19th at 7 p.m. their time, which in central time where I am is exactly 12 hours earlier. So it's in the morning, 17th, 18th, and 19th. Uh, where you are in New England, it would be 8 a.m. each day for a two-hour gathering. The first day will be all about Indonesia's story, the global altar. The second day will be Jason Hubbard, my colleague, leading the International Prayer Council, sharing how we really believe out of this event 10 years ago, movements were birthed that are massive. Church planting, unreached peoples. Rick Warren is kind of leading that. He will be one of the folks from Saddleback Church. But Kelly Shanko with the Global Alliance for Church Multiplication will be part of it. 2.2 million churches planted. Uh, the Go Movement, every believer a witness. Uh, together we can reach the world. <laughs> uh, Werner Nashtigal will be with us in person. He's just amazing. He'll be sharing on that second day uh, what God is doing amongst children. The 2 billion children in the world under the age of 15, we think are the great untapped harvest force we know that's true because we're watching now where they're being given permission to be intimate with God in prayer and to let God actually use him to take his love to others. Uh, in Africa, in the last two years with the Go movement, children have reached about one million others for Christ. One, one million others for Christ. And it's multiplying because now that they've tasted what that looks like, I mean, you think about it. Is there anything more exciting than introducing somebody else to their forever family, to their future father? Right. You know why we feel so much joy about that is because the Bible says that when one person turns, the very angels in heaven rejoice. And they really get excited so much that it overflows to us down here. <laughs> Think about that, what that looks like for a child. Yeah. All about relationship. So as these children are experiencing God using them, no junior Holy Spirit, same love of God, same power of God, same wonder of God, but they're more relational than we are. We have our little barriers. We want to make sure we don't offend anybody. And, you know, we just are sort of cautious and, you know, we're sometimes we cancel each other, <laughs> not kids. They're all about relationship. And so we you know, this thing is spreading with the kids. And Tom, I, I think you mentioned, Tom, that the children are going to leave the Thursday morning, our time, 8, 8 a.m. I'm sure going to be watching that. Um, I just I just am thankful for the, the emphasis upon children. Yeah. You know, God uses them powerfully. So. And, and we yeah. just recently had, you know, Candy Marbley here in the studio with us and 
and it just and Anlo, of course. So you've no, you know, Anne is. I don't know what what to say about Anne except that she's just absolutely awesome. The catapult. <laughs> she, she's a catapult. <laughs> she's a catalyst. She yeah. is uh, the the connector of of so many people. I mean, we we're we're just finding that through her open spirit and her open heart, there's just wonderful things that God is doing. Well, you mentioned two of my favorite people in the world because I introduced Candy to the 414 window and the prayer covenant just exploded through that. So wow. we've been on, uh, she, it's just amazing. Eight million children using the prayer covenant in 70 some nations in eight years and whole continents are opening. It's, it, and Daniel Ponji, who's our, really kind of in charge in, in Indonesia, has been captured. He's met Candy. He knows Anne well. We're dear friends for 20 years. He believes that children are the priority, the top priority for the World Prayer Assembly. So you don't want to miss that last day. Amen. And there's some great resources that you can see what God is doing, some stories that will be shared, some videos that have been captured that share like what has just happened in Africa and what is happening around the world. It's awesome. Hey, we get to be alive at this time in history. Oh my well, goodness. well, the, the the reality is is we've we've believed for it, we've prayed for it, we've asked that we would be able to see it with our own eyes, and now it's happening. We dare not stand off and be you know kind of removed and judgmental or ha carry all that baggage it's time to just seize the day and accept the outpouring that god is giving to us it looks different than any of us could have imagined i mean who could have 20 years ago imagined zoom we couldn't yeah. have we yeah. couldn't have imagined 30 years ago anything to do with the internet and 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 yet you know, it was one of the things that that Dr. Kim had in a vision that he received. This is bef in in the early 2000s. He said he in this vision that he had this outpouring of God's spirit. People were looking at he he didn't even know how to describe them, but what they are is these phones, and people were looking at them in these in, in these in little villages he had this vision on his 40 day fast of people receiving the gospel and praying together and it's like we we couldn't even fathom it these years ago but we must embrace it in the now and say amen amen well listen i just want to invite everyone that's a part of uh, hearing this broadcast uh, if I could take you personally to Indonesia, it would be the greatest joy I can I can I could think of, because you will catch something there that God is doing that it's you can't you can't explain it. You have to catch it, but you can join us digitally. You will experience something. It's all about you know prayer is better caught than taught. Amen. <laughs> God is better caught than taught. Uh, it's all about relationship. I know you will make some new friends. There's a whole digital platform that is being created where you can explore any part in any of the movement groups that will be sharing. What does that look like? Uh, dig into it a little bit more. What can that look like where I live? Because there will be regional expressions. We're having 11 regional gatherings besides the evening plenaries. Wow. And Grant, you you know, I've invited you to be a part of our North American regional team because I got drafted to help with that. <laughs> well, I, and I, I say thank you. <laughs> I'm signing up. <laughs> well, listen, if, if you're not coming, I'm bringing Charlotte along for sure. That's, <laughs> that's well, okay. she's dragged me into a lot of things in life. <laughs> and I gratefully, gratefully am entering in. You know, I, I would like us to do another little round of prayer as we kind of close. And, and Charlotte, I'm going to ask you to begin and then Tom, if you would, and then I, I will just wrap it up. But this is so exciting what the Holy Spirit is doing. Charlotte, just begin. Thanks, dear. Lord, I want to especially pray for Tom and all these leaders who will be going personally to Indonesia, to Jakarta, Father, 
Father, we pray for them, that you will strengthen them, that you will equip them, God, that you would just pour out your spirit upon them. Protect their families, God. Just put a hedge of fire about them, Lord. And may their time, God, with one another be absolutely filled, Lord, with your anointing, your presence, your joy. Father, we ask for supernatural manifestations, Lord, as you are doing throughout Indonesia, Lord, just increase them, Father. And that during these days, Lord, you will come upon the children in mighty ways, Lord. We pray that those children who lead on Thursday morning, God, will just be empowered by your yes. Spirit, God, in ways that you can only empower them, God. Lord, you said, unless we become like little children, we can't even enter the kingdom of heaven. So, Father, we just thank you. And we pray, O oh God, that this gathering, Lord, as people are watching on Zoom from all over the world, that, Lord, your presence would just rain down upon the world, Lord. God, that we would just see, Lord, uh, an absolute visitation of your Holy Spirit in a worldwide sense, Lord, that you will convict of sin and righteousness. And Father, that your kingdom would be established more and more, first of all, in our hearts, Lord, because that's yes. where it starts. Yes. But then, Lord, we would be used of you, God, to touch others, Lord. We just thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Our hearts are full. And we just praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you that uh, you said the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That was our theme in 2012 and it is again. And we are seeing it happen where people groups, where uh, movements amongst children, you are visiting, you are making yourself known. You, <laughs> you made each one of us in your image, every tribe, every tongue, every people in every nation each one of us special design our own dna unique gift and calling to be in your forever family experiencing your love and joy for all of eternity and we know it will take all of eternity to to fully uh, appreciate who you are you are so awesome so, Father, we're asking, God, that you would uh, help us not to get in the way of what you're doing. We know you want this more than we do. That's our confidence. So empower us, clothe us, release upon us a greater spirit of prayer and intimacy so that you can be in control of it all. You know best. You, you love us best. Make us one family with you and with each other, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Father, we just thank you that you've given us this privilege of praying with our brother. And Lord, we just thank you that Tom Victor has stood for these years and he's still going and he is going to go further and faster and have more impact in this next 10 years than in the last. And Lord, it's almost hard for us who are a little bit older to, to even understand or accept that. But in faith, Lord, we enter into it. God, you can do supernaturally mighty, wonderful things. And Lord, we praise you that you are going to give to each person who's joined us in this broadcast, who has prayed with us, that ability to connect with what you're doing in the earth in this now time that we're in. Amen, amen, and God bless you. And we just look forward to, we'll see you on our normal broadcast day uh, the, the following week, but 
thank God that you're here and you're going to be experiencing wonderful things over these next three days. God bless you.